Hi, welcome to KJ and Tony Move to France. Today we're going to be answering our viewers' questions. And one of the common questions we've had is about health insurance. Make sure you stick around for the end, that's when we'll be talking about it. But before we get into our viewers' questions, I just want to give you a little bit of our backstory, especially if you're just clicking on to our video for the first time. Maybe we are a couple who just recently gave up our life in the US and decided to move to France. We have been here for 71 days. We are traveling around France seeking to determine where we'd like to end up full time. So rather than deciding beforehand, like maybe many people do, before they leave for France where they'd like to live, we decided we wanted to experience different areas of France before we make that decision. So we just spent a month in Paris. We're here in Versailles now where we're spending two months. Then we go down to Nice for a month and we're continuing to travel until we get to that point where we've made that decision. You know, this is the place we really love. This is where we want to stay. And so with that said, we started this channel back in the US before we left to come here and with just like the thought that we wanted to document our experience. I have another YouTube channel and one of the exciting things for me about moving to France and leaving our jobs is that it would open up more time in my schedule that I would get to do more of what I love to do, which is to create videos. So we were planning on doing this definitely as a hobby and then the very first video that we made when we were in Paris, sort of, I don't even technically know what it means to go viral, but this video, I would venture to say, was like a viral video because what happened is that within less than a month, was it? Mm -hmm. Less than a month, we had gained 8,000 subscribers. 8,000 subscribers. And it wasn't that the, the video went live and all of a sudden we had 8,000 subscribers. It was a steady growth over that month and it started a little slow and then it grew, but it kept on growing and kept on growing. And just to sort of give you a relative idea, it took me, so we were monetized in less than a month. It took 28 days and we were monetized. With my other channel, it took a year and a half. <laughs> for me to gain 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time and to become monetized. So this was all very sudden, unexpected, somewhat overwhelming to us that this happened virtually overnight. And so why I bring it up, as a part of that, we had companies reaching out to us again, virtually overnight, where all of a sudden every day I was waking up to another email or three emails and offering, you know, we want to work with you, we want to collaborate with you. And so what I decided to do, because it was a bit overwhelming and I didn't have this experience on my other channel, I had, uh, I had companies reaching out wanting to partner with me, but they were never really companies that I felt in alignment with. So I've always turned down uh, companies to collaborate with. And so what we decided to do, because it was so sudden, because it was overwhelming, and we really didn't know how to respond, is we decided to just say no to everyone <laughs> from the start. We just sent them a, uh, a, an email back and said, we're just not ready you know, to, to partner with anyone yet. And then I gave everything to Tony. <laughs> right? I forwarded all the emails to Tony. And that was your job to well, research the company. And you have to understand, you know, we use the word monetized um, and not everybody might understand what that exactly means. Um, a few things happen. One is that when you're monetized, you start getting paid, right? And, and they can play uh, advertising. commercials, mm -hmm. advertising. Um, and you may have seen them as part of this. Uh, but also at that same time, especially as, as quickly and consistently as we were growing, we started getting these uh, solicitations to collaborate. And, and I did some research and then we sat down and talked about them individually and some of them spoke to us. And mm -hmm. so we 
uh, went forward with, uh, with some agreements with some companies. So you may have noticed that this video is being sponsored because one of the companies that Tony forwarded to me spoke to me uh, right away and he was very excited about it because it is a shoe company called Fitville. And you know if you've watched any of our videos <laughs> that we do a lot of walking, we do a lot of stair climbing. Both. Actually, I do most of the walking. <laughs> she stays home and waits for me to get no, home. No, 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 that's not true. <laughs> We do a lot of walking and of course our apartments <laughs> that we've had in Paris and here are three, four flights of stairs. So we're climbing stairs. And this particular company um, has shoes that are geared towards people who have um, orthopedic issues and people like myself. And I'm really embarrassed to share this, but I'm going to share it anyway. I have I have bunions. Okay. So many of you might have worse than bunions. So it's not really a big deal, other than oh, it's painful. It's and very it's painful. And it's uncomfortable. And one of the things I immediately liked about this company was you see uh, these kinds of shoes advertised in different places and and they don't have tie up ties, they're they do straps, and it's like they're old people's shoes. These are not old yeah. people's shoes. These are stylish, good looking, comfortable shoes. Attractive shoes. So we're going to share with you a little bit more information about this company, because right away, as soon as I saw the shoes and I learned that they have wider toe areas for people who have bunions, I was like, yes, <laughs> I want to try these shoes. And they were so uh, such an attractive selection as well. So I just want to share a little bit more information with you about this company. We share a link in the description. If you click on that link and you use the code KJN, like the letter N as in like Nancy, KJN Tony 30, you're going to get 30% off your purchase. So we think that's a pretty great deal. And you'll be happy with them. You'll be absolutely because when I received my pair, I had received mine and Tony hadn't received his yet. And I decided to wear them for our Badaboos <laughs> shoot. And that shoot involved a ton of walking up and down the stairs. And I was a little nervous because generally when I first wear a pair of shoes, I have to like break them in and Sometimes it, it can be uncomfortable before they start to get comfortable. But I was like, you know what? Um, I'm really wanting to try out these shoes because my other sneakers have been giving me blisters and all of these issues. And that was a cold and rainy day it was, too. Oh yeah, it was cold. And I was a little worried about like ruining them. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna wear, I'm gonna wear these shoes and I'm just gonna destroy them the very first day because it's raining. It's you know, it's just not. Good, but I was like, nope, I'm gonna wear them. And I am not kidding you when I tell you that these are the most comfortable pair of sneakers that I have ever owned. And I really think it's because of the wide toe area that mm -hmm. they provide in their shoes. You can buy them wide or narrow, but if you buy them wide, it gives you that extra space that I need for my very lovely, <laughs> my lo very lovely issue <laughs> that I have. And I wear them all the time now. So let me just give you a little bit more information about them, show you some pictures of Tony and I in our shoes, because Tony did get his pair of uh, very beautiful blue mm -hmm. colored comfortable. sneakers and very comfortable. Fitville, it's a very cutting edge company. It's relatively new. And the whole goal of the company is pursuing human foot health. And these shoes are very helpful for people in their daily life to prevent strained ankles and knee injuries and very friendly for people who have foot problems such as myself. These shoes also are great for people who are looking for wide shoes. They come in wide 2E and extra wide 4E and they're great for people with wide feet to relieve foot pressure and of course the wide toe boxes allow you to say goodbye to jamming your feet into narrow sneakers. One thing you haven't mentioned is the price. Mm -hmm. 
These are very affordable sneakers. Absolutely. And I think that you're also going to really like the selection they have. I have my eye on a black pair because I wear black so often. Although I do have my, that you saw, just saw, I do have my green ones on. They're sort of like a, a light green because that happens to be my favorite color. But they have a lot of really great selections and styles. And like I said, I have my eye on another pair of black ones. So anyway, with that said, let's move on okay. to answering our viewers' questions. And thank you to Fitville for sponsoring this video. We're loving our sneakers. We are. All right, now moving on to our viewers' questions. First question, if you didn't wind up staying in France, where would you want to be? Well, our channel is called KJ and Tony moved to France. So we have no intentions of going anywhere else. Now that's not to say that we might not visit other places. When we're in Nice, we're not gonna be that far from Italy. We're not gonna be that far from Switzerland. So we may go there to visit and who knows, we could fall in love somewhere. But I'm, we're not expecting to go anywhere but France. In fact, when we first decided to do this, if you've been watching us for a while, we decided to move to Paris based on a weekend trip to Paris, from Florida to Paris for a weekend. And uh, we thought it was being... Um, a little spontaneous. <laughs> well, well, spontaneous isn't the way. I, I thought we were planning well by saying, well, let's try four places before we decide where we want to go. Right. But in retrospect, we went to Paris for the first month and we didn't want to leave. We loved Paris. Yeah. And uh, now we've been here for two months and we're going on to Nice. Um, but I don't see any place that we're going to prefer to go other than here. But we never know. Yeah. So we're just, you know, we're, we're taking everything a day at a time as, as it comes. Part, and... of the, part of the beauty of this adventure is that we're only planning a little bit ahead. Mm -hmm. This isn't like we've got the next year planned. We've got the next couple of months planned. And would we like to be settled by the fall? Probably. Sure. But if we're not, we're not. So we'll see how it goes. All right, next question. Do you feel like you're spending a lot more on living expenses here than when you were in the US? Well, it is more expensive to live here. Unquestionably, it's yeah. more expensive to mm -hmm. live here. I've read somewhere that Paris is the second most expensive city in the world. Mm -hmm. um, but on the other hand, we planned for this. We have a budget. We took care of getting rid of things that we were paying for, like cars. We don't have car insurance anymore. We don't need it. Mm -hmm. We use mass transit a lot. We walk a lot. Um, eating out is expensive here. So we yeah. limit that to uh, special occasions. Um, we limit that. Mm -hmm. um, as best we can. As best we can. <laughs> of course, with our son visiting, that's a little tougher. Yeah. Um, but we do, uh, we are careful about how we spend our money. Where we were never careful about how we spent our money. In, in Florida. Well, and I think that it depends upon your lifestyle. I think that once we get to a place where we are a little bit more settled, or if not, once we choose the place that we want to uh, have as our home base, we will be finding those restaurants, those markets, sure. those places that will be a lot less expensive than just let's find some place to eat or let's go to the closest grocery sure. store. So it does, it depends on your lifestyle, it depends on your budget, it depends on your own expectations because there are some people where they need to have certain luxuries and we're, you know, in, we're in a place right now and we have an intention and a desire to learn to live without having mm -hmm. certain luxuries, so. It depends. Sure, and uh, you know, I'm I'm happy to be minimalistic. I, you know, I, yeah, I'm happy to be here. I love France. Which I think I want to clarify minimalism because minimalism isn't about uh, depriving yourself of of things. Minimalism is about really being intentional about what you are buying and. There, so much of our life has been spent just buying just because. Sure, and, and buying more than we need. Right. Uh, you know, throwing out food that we didn't eat mm -hmm. because we bought too much. Right. Or, or having clothes in the closet that, that the price tags were never taken off of. 
because of because um, yeah. you know we just bought. Right. <laughs> Was that me? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, moving on to the next question. All right. Next question is: Are you meeting? Any tourists to chat with? Any American tourists? We have met a few. Uh, I remember sitting in a Starbucks, actually, mm -hmm. uh, about a quarter of a mile from the palace in Versailles, and the family um, from North Carolina was there. It was uh, around New Year's, and we talked to them for probably half hour, 45 minutes, and it was a very interesting conversation. Um, and but, Starbucks is a likely place to sure. meet. Sure. Sure. To meet other Americans. Not that that's why we we were and, there, but it just so happened. And this particular Starbucks is literally uh, like the first business out of the palace. Yeah. And if you're American, you see Starbucks, you feel like you're home, right? Right. So uh, there are plenty of Americans there. We also met a student and her mother in a cheese shop locally here in Versailles, and that was interesting. We talked about the struggles of opening a bank account mm -hmm. and what you have to, you know, all the hoops you have to jump through for that and how frustrating that can be, which leads to another question, which is about banking and have we opened a bank account, which we have not. We've been using our WISE account, which is, which is I would call like an, an intermediary bank, because I don't know that you can use WISE as a bank account because it's not a bank per se. But we haven't really attempted that mm -hmm. yet. We haven't needed to. I think once we're in a position where perhaps we want to buy something or we're going to need to uh, sign a, a lease for an apartment, then we would need to have a bank account. But there are, you know, we just have mm -hmm. not crossed that bridge yet. And we still have our American bank accounts. I mean, the right. way the world is today, you can pay for a lot of things just that way. Mm -hmm. So we still have that, we have WISE. But what's great about WISE, and I'll put a link in the description as well if you'd like to check out WISE, is that with the WISE account, you can have multiple currencies in the WISE account. So let's say you transfer $5,000 into your WISE account. You can break that up and put like a couple of thousand in euros. You, if you're going someplace where they use, what's another currency? Pound in England. If you are going to England and it's the English pound, you can have different accounts within WISE. And when you go to use your card, they'll you can request a, a card, like a debit card to use. Wherever you go and use that card, if it's charging you in US dollars, it'll take it out of your US dollars account. Mm -hmm. If it's uh, euros, it'll take it out of your euro account. If it's pounds, it'll take it out of your pounds account. And it's, you know, hundreds uh, of different currencies that, that you can convert to within mm -hmm. one account, which I think makes it pretty unique. Sure. And WISE is not sponsoring this, by the way. <laughs> we just use them. Well, maybe and they should. <laughs> maybe they should. Um, we use them, and uh, I've been really happy mm -hmm. with, with them so far. So no, we haven't opened the bank account yet. And we've been meeting, we've actually met a couple of people, <laughs> and this has been a little um, weird. <laughs> a weird, um, weird, is that the right word? Not. It's been weird, like to meet people on the street. We've had a couple of, a couple of occurrences, one in Paris and one here in Versailles, where people have come up to us and said, "Well, first it was me in Paris, and they said, are you KJ?" And I was like, "Yes," like <laughs> not knowing, like why does this person know me? And they said, we watch you, we watch your channel, we love your videos, and that was a first. That was like, wow, this is really weird. And then that happened to you in Versailles where a it, guy came up to you. It did, and, 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 recognized I, and I have you. to say, it was, it was really kind of neat. It was neat. It was, it was enjoyable, and uh, I appreciated uh, him coming to say hi, and, and I hope more people do it. Yeah, and I, I have to say, for the couple that, that we met in Paris, I was a bit stunned myself, so I was just, you know, after we finished the conversation, I walked away and I'm like, I should have asked them more questions. <laughs> I should have asked them more. But I think I was a little bit in shock myself, like, wow, this is this is kind of interesting. So we've we've definitely been mm -hmm. meeting people and it's been really nice. And we've also had a lot of people who have reached out to us via email, which has been mm -hmm. really, really nice as well. So 
thank you to all of you who have been so supportive and have been reaching out to us. So moving on to the next question. I would like to know more about how to buy tickets for the subway, how to navigate the subway, bus, train, restaurant scene, and food. We're just going to address. Yeah, we'll just address, first <laughs> the of all, the and subways the and the trains. First of all, mass transit here is terrific, okay? It's on time, even though the locals say it's not, it's, we've, it's been on time for us every time. Uh, you can buy a ticket from, for example, from Versailles to Paris, to Paris Central, and you can change trains, which you go from a train to a subway, for four euros. So we go from Versailles to Montparnasse, I'm probably saying it wrong, which is, a, which is a main terminal, and then you can get on a bunch of different subways there. We have about a 10 minute walk within the, within the train station, and then we get on a subway that comes about every eight or nine minutes, so there's no wait, and it's, it's, it's terrific. Mm -hmm. And um, it's relatively quiet, and we get there in about 40 minutes. So uh, the train and subway situation is really good, but if I can walk you through it uh, for a moment. If you're in Paris and you're coming out, you will get um, a terminal that has a roller on it. Mm -hmm. And you have to roll it to, um, for example, first you want to hit English if you're American or, mm -hmm. or speak English. Mm -hmm. So you hit English and then you roll it to where you want to go. And uh, in our case, we roll it to a V because there's not just Versailles and every single town. We roll it to V and then we, that gives us a list of what stations we want to go to. And we, we just press that button and it, it asks how many we want. And for us, it's usually three mm -hmm. and we pay for it. It takes all kinds of credit cards easily. Mm -hmm. It's a piece of cake. It, they just drop out, you're on your way. Literally, literally, when we go into Paris, I go to buy the tickets, KJ goes to buy coffee. I'm always done before the coffee's ready, always. So it's very easy. Yeah, I'm gonna give you a little tip, like a little trick that you can use. Um, you, you can Google, like that's helpful if you have Google Maps. Just putting it in there, it's going to give you the, the route to take. But something that I've been using is Uber. So if you, if you have the Uber app, and you put in your app as if you want to get an Uber to the destination that you're seeking to go to. And of course, it's gonna give you all of the options for the different, uh, kinds, of for the different kinds of cars. But if you scroll down to the very end, there's going to be one that says transit, public transit. And there it's going to give you the route. And if you'd like to get the actual, like you can look at the route and it won't charge you anything, but let's say you want the specific, you know, detailed directions of the route. It's usually like two euro and you can click on there and we've used that several times. It tells you exactly what metro to take, what train to take, and it's really helped us a lot. And, and Google does the same thing, mm -hmm. okay? Um, Uber seems to do it a little bit better. Okay, mm -hmm. it's a little bit more detailed. Yeah. Uh, but if you don't want to uh, worry about using Uber, or you don't have an Uber app, or you don't want to spend the two euro, you can do it on Google too. I, I never ever use my Uber app. You use it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I always use Google, and I have no problem with it. Okay, the final question or questions, I should say, there were several questions about health insurance, both the health insurance that we needed to get for our visa application and also the health insurance that you're eligible for once you've been here in France for 90 days. So first I'm going to share the information about the health insurance that we needed to get in order to qualify for our long stay visa. And what I did is I followed the suggested link that was connected somehow to the, the website where you have to apply for your visa because I figured if they're recommending this insurance link and they say, oh, you're, you know, we're sending you to a third party and we're not responsible and blah, 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 but it's connected to that website. So a big confusion for us was, is this gonna qualify because there are all these stipulations if you have to have this type of insurance? And I thought, well, if the visa 
Well, and I think that what you're saying is that this is not an area where you want to go do a whole bunch of research and waste your time trying to do it right. different than what they're suggesting. In this area, you want to get your visa. Mm -hmm. It's not overly expensive. It's not cheap, but it's not overly expensive. So just follow the link and do what they say in, in mm -hmm. the uh, visa application. Right, and, and the link that where they send you to get the insurance, the option that they give you, ne yes. you need you know, travel insurance for your visa, click here. So I can tell you that we... In travel health insurance. Travel health insurance, yes. So I can tell you that we, you, it brought us to a place where I filled out all the information and the company is called Mute... I have my computer here in front of me because I want to make sure I give you absolutely accurate information. It's called Mutuaid, probably saying that wrong for all of... I don't think I don't know how many French the, people are watching all the this. Language but, police. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying that um, incorrectly, but this is what it gave you. So I was expecting that we would pay a thousand dollars each for the year. That's what I was expecting, based upon I did a little bit bit of research and I was out there trying to like figure out the best possible situation, and then came across this link. And it was actually $500 each. For both of us, it was about uh, a little over $1,000 for the entire year. And what it covers is 24-7 travel. These are the main what's called guarantees. 24-7 travel assistance, medical expenses outside the country of residence, up to 100,000 euro for epidemic and epidemic and pandemic are included in that. Uh, medical repatriation repatriation is that how you say that repatriation so, in other words you have to go back home to go to the hospital back home or something along right. those lines or if you pass away like that's all covered um not a nice thing to talk about but they do cover those expenses they cover hotel expenses following any type of quarantine in the event of an epidemic or pandemic, up to 150 euro per night, maximum 14 nights per person. It says sports search and rescue costs, and then any legal assistance abroad, and there's a deductible of 30 euro. So this is really not meant to be your, I'm going to go to the doctor and get my well checkup, you right. know, things like that, or I'm going to go to the dentist and, you know, get my teeth cleaned. But it covers for if anything should happen over the next year, you have coverage, you have insurance. So that's what's required to have for the visa. Then people were asking about the insurance that you're eligible for after 90 days. And I'm going to give you a link in the description to International Living's video that I watched that's about 20 minutes long. And I'll give you the basics of what I learned from that video, but I highly recommend that you go and watch it yourself because there's a lot of details in there that you may find beneficial. But basically after 90 days, you qualify to apply for the health insurance here in France. And what I learned is that everyone qualifies no matter what, mm -hmm. okay? So you don't have to worry about, oh, am I gonna qualify? Is there some sort of pre-existing condition where I'm not going to qualify? Everyone qualifies. So once you reach that 90 days and you qualify and you apply, they're going to send you a temporary social security number and they're also going to send you uh, a card, like an insurance card that you can use when you go to the doctor. Is it called a social security number here? Well, that's what they referred to it as in the international living okay, video. Just, they so said people... you get they said you get a temporary social security okay. card. And that right away after that you can utilize that insurance and it covers 70% of all doctors visits so she was saying that generally it costs like let's say 35 euro to go to the doctor then you get reimbursed 70% of that so that your cost ultimately only comes out to be like, what is that, nine euro or something? Yeah, like Seven, 10, 10 euro. Like say. 10 euro. And 
let's say you have to go to the hospital. Hospital care, they reimburse 80%. And then after you've been in the hospital for a month, they reimburse 100%. And they reimburse 70 to 100% of prescription drug costs. And this is for medical and dental. And she said that she has been living in France for 12 years and that it pretty much has not changed in the 12 years since she has, she has been in France. And it sounds like, to me, really great coverage. And we should say that we haven't yet reached the 90 days for right. us. So we're giving you information that's based on what we've been told, mm -hmm. not our experience yet. Mm -hmm. Once we have that experience, we'll come back to you and tell you what it's been like with first-hand experience. And that's why I'm putting in the description that link to the International Living video where it explains all about health coverage in France. And by the way, uh, just an aside, if you're considering doing something like this, International Living Magazine oh, yeah. is the place to start. Mm -hmm. I mean, you should start there. Yeah, It's a great magazine. It will tell you about uh, little hamlets and uh, around uh, the whole country. Um, and it was the first thing that also told us about insurance. Yeah, absolutely. It's really been a super valuable resource for us in many different aspects. Mm -hmm. So that's it for today's video. Hopefully it wasn't too long for you and hopefully it provided you with some helpful information. And if you feel like the video helped you and you liked it, make sure you hit the like button. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please be sure to hit the red subscribe button. If you hit the notification bell, you will be alerted to all of our videos once they're posted. And just to let you know, moving forward, we're going to be posting these Q&A videos every single Wednesday. So keep those questions coming and we'll continue to answer them for you. And as we get further information on some of the things we've talked about today, we'll update you during those Q&As. Yeah. So thanks for watching. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.